There are four layers of the devices, whether they're CX or LGX. So we have the silicone layer, which is biocompatible. It's used in all sorts of contexts in medicine for biocompatible prostheses. There's also an inhibisone layer. Inhibisone has been a tremendous addition to the armamentarium, especially in the context of the higher risk patients. So those are redo patients, patients with diabetes, and so forth. We have noticed in our practice that a lot of the hospitals are not allowing antibiotic irrigation. And so it's become even more important for us to have antibiotics that are impregnated into the device so that the patients can reap the rewards of that. Now, in addition to this, there was the addition of perylene some years ago, and that helps in prevent premature wear of the device. Within the silicone, there is the Dacron weave, and it's the Dacron weave acting together with the silicone that really provides the symmetry that the patients want and expect to look totally natural, both in the erect and the flaccid state. Now, that Dacron weave can be different. In the LGX, it allows expansion with length as well as width, and that's great for the patient who has the straight phallus with good elasticity of the tissue. But the CX device, which for me is the workhorse device, can really be used in all contexts. Patients are, of course, concerned about length, and they're concerned about width. And they often ask, is this going to give me a bigger penis? And it's important for them to know, and for, important for us to tell them, that the size ultimately is determined by the elasticity of the patient's own tissue. And it doesn't matter, in a way, what the device is capable of doing in terms of the width expansion. All of them are more than capable of filling the space within the corpora, given normal tunica anatomy. Because it doesn't matter what the device looks like when you inflate it outside of the body. It only exists in the context of being within the tunica. I have never seen a patient where the patient was inhibited from achieving what they wanted because of the device. It's always the patient's own tissue that we can't modify that is the problem. So I see a lot of instances in my practice, and I'm sure other people do too, where there is a defect in the tunica, whether it's from a plaque incision, from Peyronie's disease, or thinning of the tunica. And it's great to have something that has really controlled expansion so I do not get an aneurysmal deformity. In the context of Peyronie's disease, when there's an area of the tunica that's not elastic, the CX device particularly is going to retain a good straight phallic shape even if there is some small amount of residual curvature. It may even straighten that curvature over time. Now, there are many cases, for example, if I have to do plaque incision, where I've left a little bit of a defect in the tunica, and I don't want an uncontrolled expansion that could conceivably cause an aneurysmal deformity in that area. So something that has its own intrinsic symmetry is going to avoid the aneurysm. And really in the modern era of the Boston Scientific devices, I have not seen aneurysmal deformity. Setting expectations with all surgery is incredibly important. A lot of patients intuitively think that they have to have a perfectly rigid steel erection. And of course, this is not true. Rigidity is important in something like Peyronie's disease. So most people model, although there are other ways of treating Peyronie's disease, but if there's any residual curvature, you want a device that's rigid enough that it can overcome that curvature over time with the natural remodeling that comes with the scaffold of the device. And both the CX device as well as the LGX device, but particularly the CX device, is really good at that and provides more than enough axial rigidity for that. I've seen this in my own practice, as well as when we look at this in the cadavers, that the rigidity far exceeds what's going to be needed in any kind of intimacy context. There is more than enough axial rigidity in the CX and the LGX device than would be needed. 